All right, guys, can you use the Sintra Lisa systems for production printing? Well, yes, we are. And I just wanted to shoot this quick video to show you what it's like to take a print out of the printer, depowder it, sandblast it, and just how quick that process really is. So we've been making our scanning pyramids on this machine right here, the Lisa Pro, which you can find on the visionminer.com slash along with all the other printers and accessories and all that good jazz. But for right now, I'm just gonna remove this print take it through the powder handling station and then sandblast it and show you what that process looks like. So without further ado, I'm gonna start with gloves and the hand of Jay appears once again with exactly the needed materials, awesome. So first thing I'm gonna do is on the printer right here, you'll see it says pyramids, 30 sets, hollow four S code has finished. So I'm gonna remove print and as soon as it's at the right temperature, it's gonna let me unlock the lid. So I'm gonna click that. And then I have approximately 10 seconds to open the lid. So I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna show you this awesome print bed down in here. I'm gonna put my gloves on real quick. And one of the cool things about the powder handling station is that you keep all your tools right here in these drawers. So it makes it really easy. And this is the IO box. Now I'm gonna orient it properly they did this thing here where it says print out or powder in. And if you can read it, it's facing the right direction. So if I face it this way, I can read print out. I'm gonna place this over the print area, which is here on the right side. Now this process is very similar on the Lisa X and the original Lisa. There's not too much different between them. The biggest difference is actually the powder handling station itself. All right, so I got that positioned and now I can hit next. And so it's going to raise up the entire bed. And as you can see, it's coming out of the print bed. Okay, so the cake is rising out of the bed and I'm gonna turn on the powder handling station just by clicking this button once. It says, check the plug hose A, we're good. Check the powder container to open this up, make sure it's good. We already emptied that so we know it's ready and then it turns on the vacuum. All right, so I'm sort of just pushing these extra parts down into here like this. I'm gonna get all my parts out. All right, now I've got just my parts left over and I can take some of these tools I can sort of brush each one off a little bit. Now I don't have to do this too much because I'm actually going to put this into the sandblaster and it's going to make quick work of all this extra dust and these little features. I'm just going to take all my parts and put them in here. Make it easier to go into the sandblaster. All right, so now that I got my parts ready, I'm actually gonna use this whole vacuum system with the powder that's already in the sieve, and I'm gonna suck the extra powder out of the machine and empty the overflow bin, and then I'm gonna go into the sandblaster. So, all I gotta do is take this mechanism right here, and I'm gonna put one of these ends on it, comes with it, and I'm just gonna go into the printer and start getting all that extra material. Once again, this powder handling station really does work on your powder handling, really. It's a full, complete station for cleaning and reusing all that extra powder. Definitely, definitely worth the investment, especially if you're doing this for business, and not just for fun. I'm gonna take the small attachment now. Now you really don't have to be too thorough with this if you're gonna use the same material over again. Now we are gonna switch materials here this week, so we'll come back and get this extra, extra clean. That is something to mention. If you give us a call, we'll talk about using multiple materials. The biggest advantage of the Sinrit over most of the competitors is the open material system. So not only do you have nine different choices of materials from Sinrit, but you also can use whatever powders you want and do development if you're into that. 
I'll place this back down, making sure that is connected right there. There's a little sensor in here that actually tells it it's a line and it switches the hose function back to here and it keeps gathering the powder. So I'm gonna come here to the side, pull it out. And then I'm just gonna dump this right down into there. go. Now that that's going, I can just brush a little bit of this excess down in just to make sure it's getting caught into the sieve. They include this nice squeegee so that I can then just brush any excess down into there. And we're pretty much good to go. There's still a bunch of powder in there that's getting moved by the screw. So I'm going to let it go for a little bit while I move on to the sandblaster to get all these parts ready for distribution. All right, so I'm just going to open the side of this. This is the sandblaster SLS. I'm going to put my parts inside, close it back up, and I'm ready to go. All right, so now I'm just going to go in here. I got my gloves, and you got two different options here. I've got this little nozzle up at the top, which is a smaller, thinner nozzle for delicate parts, and I've got this spray gun, which is going to sandblast all the parts in here. So I'm just going to start sandblasting. And you can see almost immediately the color of the part changes. So it goes from that powdery gray to essentially a black. And I'm just going to dump all these out and just get them all real good over here in the corner. As you can see, this is using very, very fine glass powder. So it's almost like sand, but it's glass. And that gives it a nice finish and it gets all that excess powder off of the part. And just from this quick blast, you can already tell the pressure, the air pressure and everything else has already gotten most of that spare powder out. There's not much more I gotta do. Okay. Then I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna jostle them a little bit to get most of that glass powder off before I reach in the machine and actually gather them up. Just looking for any extra areas that might need a little more sandblasting. And then frankly, I found it easiest to actually come in there with my bare hands. And you definitely do want to watch for this back corner because little parts can fall back there. And here you have it, the bowl of parts, all ready out of the sandblaster. Now, this thing's really finished uh, moving all the powder into the sieve unit. I'm actually gonna press this button again and it's gonna switch over to sifting. So now, this whole unit down in here is vibrating back and forth through very, very fine sieves and dropping all the ready to go powder down into the thing. Now I will add a little bit more powder here after this video, just to make sure this powder is totally refreshed and ready to go. But for now, I've got my parts. We got 300 of these little beautiful pyramid markers for 3D scanning. If you do need 3D scanners or any 3D scanning supplies, by the way, check out fishminer.com slash scanners. We have all kinds of stuff available and we do a lot of that too. To really finish these parts, I might give them a rinse in some water or something like that, since these are a consumer product that's going out into the field. Uh, but pretty much, that's about it. So from print to powder handling station to sandblasting, that's all you got. And I've got 300 more parts that we're about to send out. So anyway, if you're interested in any of these Sinterit products, uh, selective laser sintering, the different powders and materials, or even FDM, like our new 22 IDEX 3D printer, or 3D scanners, we are here to help. Make sure to check out fisherminer.com and then shoot us an email or give us a call. We're here to help you get the right product and equipment for your business. Anyway, that's all I got for today. So thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.